What's up, y'all? Hey. I'm Akadosh. That's a number one question everybody was asking. What's what's your name? I'm Akadosh, aka I'm Uncle Mother Kenny. You can call me Kenny though. Okay. Um, number one question was what's my name? What's our nationality? We're American. Yeah. We love America. USA. 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 And um yeah, we have a couple questions pulled up because we got like 400 questions. We can't answer 400 questions, y'all, but we can do like five each. Yeah. So what's the first question you got? The first question is a question that everyone's been wanting to know since 1957. Dang. And the question is, how do we meet? So tell them, babe. Okay. Um, I'll let you know if you're wrong. Okay. <laughs> we met at um, a concert, but it was a fake concert. Cause in LA sometimes like artists can't get big like like people it doesn't they can't get a crowd filled so they'll hire people like actors and models to come and make it look like they have more fans than they do which is crazy but we met there we talked a little bit and we didn't like move past that we just like talked and like and literally saw each other and met each other and then I did a video later where I was a drummer for an artist and the casting agency they cast me they posted it. And Kenny was uh, also working with them and following them, and she saw it. Slid in the DMs. And then what'd you do, babe? Um, I had a concept for a photo shoot, and he matched the like the look that I was looking for. Sure. And then I sent him like the presentation of it and everything, the PowerPoint, blah blah blah. She ain't sent me no PowerPoint. Something like yeah. that. <laughs> and then um, we just got to talking about it more into it. It was strictly business at the time. And then he accidentally texted me. Uh, cause my name and his phone was Ken and he had a friend named Ken at the time. Mm -hmm. And then, um, he texted him about some pizza and then I was like, you might be texting the wrong person, but then I ended up getting flirty and long story short, now we're here. Who was flirty first? You were flirty first. I don't think I was flirty first. Yes, you were flirty first. We're also, we have chunks pulled up right here. Y'all. So if we keep going like this, yeah, we're watching watching our our baby baby on the webcam. Um, yeah, that's all right. I had a homie named Ken. We went to the club. They had pizza at the club. It was delicious. I hit Ken the next day, but I actually accidentally hit Ken. So, or maybe not accidentally, but that's how stuff be working, y'all. So shout out God for aligning that one. Amen. What's your long-term goal with your content? What are the top brands you would like to partner with in regard to food? What did y'all do before this? So, um, we both can kind of answer this on our own. My long-term goal with my content has always been just to have fun and to grow as a artist slash content creator in general. I've been making content since sixth, since sixth grade. My school gave me a laptop. I made my first like skit. Um, I put it on like probably Facebook or something, maybe YouTube. And I was in sixth grade and I remember seniors started coming up to me saying like, yo, this shit is hilarious. So I was like, bet, I'm gonna run with it. Um, the top brands I would like to partner with in food, they get a lot of slander and controversy and they definitely doing some fucked up shit right now, but McDonald's is my all time favorite brand. I think they do branding well. I love the color, the look, everything. Um, Taco Bell and then probably Walmart. And once again, Walmart ain't the best. They, they do a lot of shit I don't agree with, but I've read Sam Walton's book. I grew up on Walmart. I'm from the South. That's just like, for me, if I had like my face in a Walmart, it'd be so fire. And then honestly, be, me being the person I am, I'm gonna talk to McDonald's CEO or whoever I come in contact with and Walmart's person and be like, y'all gotta quit doing this shit. Like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna see them as a person and, and try to get them on a better wave and a higher frequency. Um, what did y'all do before this? I was a model and selling clothes and just like hustling any way I could, so. Um, what? Oh, thank you. My long-term goal with my content is to definitely collab with a lot of my favorite uh, brands, not even just collaboration, but partnerships in a sense to where there's longevity and really high pay um what are the top brands oh and to just find people who understand my humor and my music where i'm coming from and to really take off with my music and find people that really and genuinely understand my sound and where it's going and and yeah what are the top brands you'd like to partner with in regard to food i feel like that's your question but you could say just brands that you would want to partner with if it was food though i feel like it'd probably be like Probably Waffle House. Oh, Probably Waffle House. I, Waffle I don't hear much one. people collab with Waffle House. But I don't think anyone has. I'd buy a Waffle House just because. That's, that's true. Um, top brands, though. Bratz, Juicy Couture, um, Pete's Coffee. Yep. Um, Waffle House, of course. Um, yeah, that's it. And then 
what did y'all do before this? I was working a regular job because, you know. Where'd you work at? I worked at a medical spa. Well, okay. before that, medical spa and then a regular facial spa. I liked beauty, so I was just always working at some sort of like beauty thing. Um, before that, I was also modeling and doing like modeling and acting gigs. So, yeah, that's kind of what we were both doing and how we met each other. Has has parenting? Mm, I'm kind of dyslexic, y'all. I ain't even going lie. Has becoming parents deepened the bond? That you have with your partner, yes. Yeah, for I think sure. it, I think it has to, or Definitely. y'all probably split up. I don't see how you could yeah. stay with someone and it not deepen the bond unless y'all some yeah. dumbasses, or you split up. I agree. I think you have to go through all those trials and errors and those waves of like emotions and challenges of like having a baby because it's not even about you guys anymore. Right. It's about you guys coming together for your baby and your child. So. Yeah, that's my answer to it. Yeah, I, I agree 100%. I think you're spot on with it. You said you came back to Cali for a big deal you couldn't pass up, but we haven't seen anything of it. What's the deal that brought you back? You have seen it, if you watch me at all. It was Jack in the Box yeah. and the Dodgers. Don't be fake. It was... <laughs> it, it Sometimes with, with big opportunities, and especially brand deals, as the viewer, it might just seem like, oh, this is a 10-second post. But when it comes to negotiation, having to get shit done client approval i had to send it off to i had to make the content send it to jack in the box them tell me what they wanted to change send it back send it back to them them send it to the dodgers them say we want to change this send it back to jack send it back to me this took months and by the time we had left and we went to atlanta i was supposed to be done and my agent at the time who was doing the the gig she hit me and she was like the last video has to be in la they don't have what they use in this video and any other Jack in the Box outside of LA. So I could have just flown back, but also we we're just getting different signs. We we're like, we'll just go back and we can at least like finish the year out or something. So that was it. Jack in the Box has been the realest with me so far in terms of brand deals and really like putting money in my pocket. So shout out Jack in the Box. How do you guys come together to discuss an issue or disagreement? Damn, I'm getting like, I'm getting a couple questions. You got good ones. Who cares about me as an individual? <laughs> Say it again. What, what was it? How do you guys come together to discuss an issue mm. or disagreement? That's a good question for you because you kind of the you kind of the leader in that area. I feel you like take we're still trying to. I think we're still getting better at that. How do we come together? We kind of just. I feel like personally, we give each other space when we piss each other off, and then we look at each other and we be like, "Don't piss me off." And then we just joke about it because it really wasn't that serious. Just understand that shit is not that serious. Unless it's really something that someone has you fucked up and they need to understand that. Then that's different. But realize if you love someone and shit be so fucking little and tiny, then it's not that fucking serious. Get over it. And tell them stop being sassy. Come on, babe. If it's not you. Are you guys kind of going to discuss an issue or disagreement? I, th I think Kenny right on all of that. I kind of Kenny's kind of better about acknowledging issues from being with Kenny. I've definitely seen I've had a lot of like walls up. I've I've had a lot of walls and different defense mechanisms and like traumatic issues where I would react in a certain way. And Kenny was really good about calling me out on it and being like. Don't do that. Remember you used to say that a lot? She would be like, don't do that. And I just I'm kind of a person I need to hear that every so often because Sometimes I have a lot of yes men around me and they're like, you know, you're good. You're good. And I'm like, oh, okay. So I just keep going. But from probably like day one, Kenny would tell me something like, don't do that. And I'd be like, oh shit. And if I did it again, she'd be like, why are you doing that? So it just takes like holding each other accountable, but also trusting each other to hold you accountable. Basically. Yeah. yeah. I'm sorry. I keep yawning. You guys, I'm freaking tired. It's that time of the month. My baby yelling at me. It's false. Excuse Breastfeeding me. takes away a lot of your fucking energy because it's basically running six miles. Mm -hmm. And it's fall season. Okay, baby, you taking that. Do you have day jobs too or can you be influencers full time? We don't have day jobs. Um, I personally haven't had a day job in a long time. I don't like working for people and I don't like being told what to do. And probably the biggest thing, I don't like having to be somewhere at a certain time and stay there for a certain time and be expected to do something the entire time. That to me is fucking bonkers. So I haven't worked a day job in a long time. I was selling clothes, doing pop-ups, I day trade, and now I do content creation. I would say full-time, but I still day trade and sell clothes. I think that 
I stopped working a day job like two years ago, two, three years ago. Like kind of when I met him and I, I quit towards like the beginning of us meeting each other. Now I'm a full-time mom and getting into my influencer bag. Come on. What are you on your fourth brand deal? Fourth, fifth brand deal? Something like that. Come on. She's going to be paying all the bills soon. Come on. What is your greatest challenge as an interracial couple? First of all, you guys, I really didn't know we were interracial. I didn't know we were interracial. I, I just thought black and white or like Asian and fucking African was interracial. That's a good one. But I didn't know we were interracial. I thought I we were both American around here. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so I think, but for us, we have different cult cultures. Um, I'm West Indian and I'm Trinidadian and Guyanese. So our cultures are different as far as food. Food is mainly the, the only thing that separates us. I think. Like barely though, because I eat everything. So it's, as far not, it's as not like, like I'm like, I, I no, can't, but like I can't as far as like how we grew up and, and yeah. like what our cultures usually eat yeah. is, is different. But I think we're very similar. Like there's no challenge. Yeah. Unless, I, hold on, wait. There's certain things that his mom cooks. What the fuck? It'll be like, <laughs> I'm okay. I say the same thing. Oh, okay. Is that an interracial thing? That's a damn you foreign. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. That's it. Um. Yeah, inter the interracial <coughs> interracial couples kind of crazy because I'd have to look at what that means like by definition. Because what does inter mean? Like really, really like in definition. No, nah, it means like something else, like intercontinental. You know what I mean? But inter interracial, it's I feel like it kind of doesn't apply to us because we're both like somewhat ambiguous in race. I'm black. But you get guests for other stuff all the time. Like, when you said you're Asian, people are like, oh, I knew it. Like, yeah, but I feel like that's just, like, I feel like, nah. But, I feel like when they see me, they see a black woman. And then for me, I'm definitely ambiguous. Depending what I'm wearing and how I'm doing, what I'm saying and stuff, I get guests for every single race possible. So we don't deal with the average problem of, like, someone who's obviously one race and one race. So interracial couple, I feel like we don't have any issues. Yeah, I feel like I feel like we really don't have a challenge. I'm not gonna say we do because I feel like that's something more like Nara and Lucky might deal with, or like who's someone else like John Legend and Chrissy Teigen. I feel like they're more obvious. Yeah, we both are a lot of the same races, just yeah. in like different percentages. So. That's true. How did Kenny start in music, and how did Akadaj get into modeling? Shout out them for knowing my name. Um, how did Kenny start in music? I kind of been doing music since like I was a kid. Like it's always been in me. I always was writing songs, performing it like for the family. You know what they say when like you're a, a child performer for your family. You That's grow true. up and you become crazy. But I've always done it. My sister's always done it. My little brother's always done it. My family's in the music industry, so it's just always been around me. It's just always been around me. Um yeah, and I just love it. It's, it's just, it's more of like a soul thing. It's not a brain thing, it's a soul thing. So once you feel it and you know, then it's embedded in you. Good answer. You, you thought about that one? You planned no, that one out? I just slipped. Um, how did Akadaj get into modeling? I got street scouted. I never planned to be a model. I never cared to be a model. I never like was like, oh, please let me be a model. I got to LA and even in back in, in Texas, I had a couple of times where photographers were like, yo, you should be a model. But... I didn't do much with that. I got to LA and almost every time I would go out somewhere, someone would stop me and be like, I'm a photographer, I'm a brand owner, I'm an agent, whatever. And I would just get street scouted a lot to where, um, I would just get street scouted a lot where um, I started modeling a little bit and then I got signed and then just kept doing gigs. What type of food feels like home to you? Mommy. Not this one. Um, Curry chicken. I was about to say Trinidadian your mom curry chicken curry. with roti. Um, fry bake. Um, stew chicken. Jerk chicken. Freaking macaroni pie. Callaloo. Um, and then the, 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 the champagne colas with the, the little fox cat on it. The champagne colas cool with the cream cat. sodas. Those. And tamarind balls. <laughs> and Ovaltine cookies. For what? me, for me, what feels like home to me. So there's two things. One, there's the stuff my mom would cook that reminds me of home. She would always like fry a big fat fish and um, a lot of ramen. But like mama noodles, like Thai ramen, not like Japanese ramen. 
those feel like home to me. But also my mom was at home a lot and I definitely grew up very poor in poverty. So and that, Kenny always likes to like say oh and like act like it's such a sad moment. It's not sad, it's just like real life. I used to eat a lot of like hot pockets, TV dinners, lunchables. <laughs> they shut the fuck up. They're they were good. They was they were fucking hitting. Yeah, because you're fucking around too much. So, like, Hot Pockets, TV dinners, Lunchables, all that shit that people eat when they really, like, down bad broke, that shit really feels like home to me. I ate a Lunchable, what, yesterday? He did. Just to do and it. And I almost fucking barfed. It was a bologna. I hate it. It was not it. bologna. It was Lunchable. ham and cheddar. Let's be fucking specific. Fun fact, though. Lunchables was created to sell more bologna to kids. Look it up. It worked. Do you guys like when people come up and say hi in the wild? In the wild is crazy. <laughs> um, I personally love it. I'm super social. I've been talking to people since I was like six years old. I remember like just talking to anyone at Walmart. So I love it. I, I, I just uh, am excited for the day when it's more than just hi in a picture. Like talk to me about your day. Ask me about my day. Talk to me about the economy. I'm, I'm always down for a good conversation. Um, if I'm not drunk, my social anxiety is it's up there, y'all. I have social anxiety. I feel like a lot of the time when people come up, like, my reaction's so slow. Like, I stare at them like this because I'm talking to myself in my head, telling myself, Kenya, someone's talking to you. And then I'm like, hey, because I'm not used to, I just be living in my own world, I guess. And most of the time, this is still very new to me, so I'm still getting used to, like, people coming up to us and saying hi. It's not like I'm not going to say hi, but I will say hi. I'm just in my own world, y'all. And now I'm a mom, so my main focus is, like, oh, is Chunks okay? Let me get Chunks this. Or um, my eyes are just on Chunks or on Okra. It's just, I feel like life should be moving fast for me, y'all. You can definitely come say hi to us, but can you bring up a good point or makes me think of a point? Don't get close to chunks. That's the only thing. Like, sometimes people get way too close to chunks when they come yeah. up to us. And that's just weird for anybody, baby. Like, give him yeah. some space. He a baby. He He's definitely looking cry. at you like, who the fuck are you? Yeah. What is Chunk's favorite food? Yeah. He has a lot Everything. of food. Everything. Yeah, he loves food. He loves... Go ahead. Go ahead. Blueberries. Blueberries. Okay. Loves blueberries. <laughs> he loves blueberries. He loves fruit, period. He yeah, loves he's a big fruit. fruit. Um, he loves... Pho. Pho. He loves. Pho. He likes breads. He likes he a likes good, good breads. croissant. Yeah. Um, yeah. We gave him a Chinese donut today. He loves Chinese. Yeah, donuts. he does. He likes bread. Um, um he kind of eats everything. He loves broccoli. He, he loves peas. He loves his little carrots. He loves Kenny's cooking. Yeah, he likes. Kenny's been cooking. making him a lot of like fun little kid things. Like yeah. he made chicken nuggets out of what? I made chicken nuggets out of just ground chicken, but then I um added some like soft carrots and broccoli and a little bit of cheese in there and grinded it up and then cooked it he it looked good that. too i definitely would have fucked I it ate up. Some, it you gotta start making them like a little like dip like a little like ranch but like a healthy okay. one like yeah, a I'll nice little that. like a uh, raspberry jelly or I'll something i'm putting our smith on the phone right now <laughs> uh, did we miss any of his foods i feel like um, we're missing one a really important one fruits pho, meats breads uh, uh, yeah how has having a child changed you guys individually and also has it changed your relationship or intimacy? Has it brought you guys closer? How has having a child changed you guys individually? I feel like even more now, I was a homebody, but now I don't want to go nowhere. Like my main priority is taking care of my baby. Yeah, and I'm trying that. to get better at like going out and stuff, but I feel like no one, no offense babe, can take care of chunks the way I do. She's But that's just me as a mom, like in, in my concerns and stuff. Like and chunks we have trying to get better at that. Um, how has it changed you guys individually? Yeah, my social time is, is different now because I don't go out like I used to. Um, I want people to come see me. I don't want to go to your house. <laughs> um, you don't want to anyways, though, in the yeah, beginning. I, I'm not I a, don't I don't like going, I, I don't usually like going to people's house unless they live in, like, a ridiculous house. Yeah, and if I, I like know you, home. if I feel like I can be in your fridge. Yeah, yeah if you and you got to have shit and you got fridge. roommates and shit. Yeah. I'm not tiptoeing around their ass and they acting weird. Um... But yeah, nothing much has changed because I've already been like a, a nurturing person and like a mom already to a lot of people. So well, I think um, for you, you definitely like bossed up and became more mature in a sense. Mm -hmm. Where you used to talk to a lot of people about anything they wanted to talk to you about, oh, yeah. but now you like don't have the time or energy for it. So if it's right. not benefiting you, I feel like you're really good about not 
participating in it anymore. Mm, I cut a lot of people off. Yeah. Once I got pregnant, I was like, if you piss me off once, you're not bringing you're that done. energy yeah. around me or my baby. So, yeah, I'm very close, small circled. Bad. Show them nails. Go ahead. Those five below or uh, TikTok shop? TikTok shop. Love full right. nails. All right, all right, all right. Um, you want to? <clears throat> you, you answered all that? Also, how to change your relationship, uh, quote, intimacy, how it brought you guys together. When they mean intimacy, what do they mean? Like how some, I feel like some couples, they have a baby and they lose, like, romanticism. Mm. Like, they're just, like, parents and roommates more than, like, the couple they were before they had a baby. No, I think we're both very strong-minded personalities. I think that we... Once we're, like, all on each other, we're all on each other. And, like, we'll still kiss in front of Chung so he can see love and stuff. He be slapping me. He be, yeah. He be, he, he he be trying to get me away from both of me. us. Like, we're literally always together to the point where it's kind of hard to be roommates, you know? Like, we're just, like, eventually... Some people do it, man. Yeah, some people do it. I don't know. We get our separate time together yeah. as individuals. But I think that's normal. We're not up each other's butt. But we still love each other. We still kiss each other. And we still have our moments whenever Chunks is asleep or with his kunya um, um how has having a child changed you guys individually for me um i love being a dad it's my favorite thing on earth um for me it made me just man up in a sense of like now i fix stuff around the house i'm like working out to get stronger so i can take care of kenny and my mom in chunks um i was already hustling before but now i hustle even harder you can ask Kenny. i'm up at 6 a.m every day i'm up i'm in bed at like 1 a.m i'll be night. like you need to lay down because you're freaking doing a lot <laughs> i get kind of cranky if i'm up too long yeah. but um that made me boss up and then individually besides that um after having a baby i can now see everyone as a baby so it makes me a lot kinder to everybody because we're all babies at one point who just wanted everything out of the world and mm -hmm. at some point something went wrong or it went right for you so it's like, it, it makes stuff kind of sad for me. Like, I see some people and I'm just like, fuck, man. Like, they were yeah. a baby at one point And at some point their parent fucked up yeah, or someone crazy. around them fucked up. Yeah. So, I just, I'm a lot uh, more open-minded and kind-hearted towards everybody now. Yeah. I do think, though, for the, for our change our relationship thing, mm -hmm. we don't really go out with just us two anymore yeah. and just move as if it was us two. Because we have a baby with us, but... Once our once Chunks gets comfortable with his uh kunya, which is his grandma, then we can start going out and doing like little things together. But that's true. I I guess that that's a good uh point. That's that I agree. Though what changed the most in our relationship from having a baby is me and Kenny are both pretty reckless. Yeah, we were before oh my Chunks. Gosh. Like, we used to get no with more. within the within the <laughs> first um like few months that we were together without Kenny being pregnant or having a baby we were reckless we were doing anything and everything and we both have enough attitude and ego in ourselves that we'll do kind of whatever we feel like so together we were definitely a menace yeah we were crazy we, we were even getting booked on some shoots together and like leaving which is yeah. crazy for two that's like two people going to work at mcdonald's and the manager's like we're so and so and both of them left we like, even that, did a video we shoot y'all for dancers and we aren't fucking dancing. Kenny randomly killed it though. They made her the whole star of it. They made her the whole fucking focal point. But it it was bad. Like we he taught us a bad. whole choreography, y'all, and it we were just fucking up. Like Kenny did not fight. She's been no, really nice. No, because they up. wanted us to do the dance choreography on camera, and we just kept messing up. I was messing up. You messed up like once, babe. There's a reason if you watch the video, if y'all ever see it, Kenny's the start of it. She's the middle. She's the end. I'm barely in it because I fucked up so much they cut me out of the whole video. <laughs> and Kenny's the one who told them to bring me. So they, they hired Kenny because she actually be dancing and doing and choreo. And the dancer called out. And then uh, they're like, yeah, we don't have a dancer. You know what I mean? And you're, she was like, my uh, my boyfriend dances. And I dance in the club, y'all. Like, I turn up in he the club. He a pop locker, y'all. I he got in that bitch. They was like, they were doing dance hall and shit. And I was like, fuck. Yeah, it was the it, it was, was my big ass. He talking about get on getting on the floor, rolling around, just hard ass <laughs> fucking rocks and getting back up. You did it though. Up. You killed it. Oh my gosh, that was a lot. But yeah, <laughs> that all. Yeah. All right, so that's it, y'all. We we're gonna do a much longer Q and A. Um, we tried it and it just ended up taking too long. Chunks woke up, my battery died, just a whole bunch of shit. So I think that's the main things people wanted to know for now. We'll definitely do another update at some point, but um. Yeah, thank you everybody for watching for real. It's been a year since we've been making content on TikTok and everything yes. and it's changed our lives completely. 
Um, yeah, Chunk's real name is Chunks. We're oh, Amer- yeah, we're American. Chunks. Um, what else? Anything we, we missed? I feel like we could sneak in one more um, if you remember one. No. All right, peace out, y'all. Bye, guys. <laughs>